Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. A very warm welcome to our service this morning of prayer and praise from Holy Angels Lilliput. And we join together now to sing our opening hymn and as always the words will appear on the screen so please do join in at home. have a few moments of quiet as we prepare for our prayers of penitence. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and in faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we join together in the special prayer for this week, the Collect. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us your servant's grace by the confession of a true faith, to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of the divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith, that we may evermore be defended from all adversities. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, 
but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I'm with you always to the end of the age. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. On this of all days, may I speak in the name of the Holy Trinity, of Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. I've come to think about the church year as having two distinct parts. The immediate run up to Christmas and the first half of the year seem to be dominated by Jesus' story. We seemingly, and on fast forward at times, whip through 33 odd years in six months. Second half of the year, an apparently slower and less exciting pace with a focus on Jesus' teachings, a sort of an ethical and moral maze on how we might apply and live out what our Lord has tried to get into our heads, if I could be so vulgar. And as each of these two parts of the year begin, an opportunity for us to get orientated, try and establish the context for what is to come. Six months ago then, Advent as a time for preparation and waiting before the big day. And now, well, that's a bit different. Of course, we've just had the big bang of Pentecost, if I can call it that, with its build up and focus on the Holy Spirit. But just a minute, the church seems to say, time for yet another big festival. Let's talk about the Holy Trinity first. I don't know about you, but it's almost like the starting gun has gone off and we've all been called back to the start of the race. Just a minute, something more for you to take on board before all those teachings and life lessons take place. In one sense, Trinity Sunday's observance, its timing, reflects how the doctrine, that's a big word which means it's quite important, how the doctrine came about or came to where it currently is. That's after, after Holy Scripture was written. Arguably, after all the protagonists of the New Testament had, as we say, gone to glory, hundreds of years until things reasonably settled down in the 300s. But, but, significant aspects still not completely agreed between various Christians. And enough, a millennia ago, for one understanding of the Trinity to be the final straw in the formal separation of the Latin West, that's us by the way, and those of our fellow Christians in what we call orthodoxy. Even today, the debate continues. And in only one aspect, that tells you something. It's important. So let me relieve you by saying straight away that I'm not going to go into any of the details of those often apparently technical or sometimes completely unintelligible for me, arguments, signs of relief all around. Firstly, I'd like you to take on board the significance of the timing of this festival. As I said a bit earlier, immediately after Pentecost and before all those many Sundays after the Trinity, what we glibly call ordinary time. St Augustine, who had a lot to say about everything, inevitably had a lot to say about the Trinity. As well as all those aspects of the Holy Spirit that we've been reflecting on over the past few weeks, he understood the Holy Spirit as the love that unites the Father and the Son. And with that in mind, he also saw the Holy Spirit 
as that aspect of Almighty God as a gift which binds us to God. The operative term there is gift. Augustine, in using that word, is trying to import, impart to us an understanding that the nature of the gift also says a lot about the nature of the giver. What that says to me is that over these coming weeks of ordinary time, we are to search out the many gifts of the Holy Spirit. Remember them? Wisdom, understanding, counsel, fortitude, knowledge, piety, and respect of the Lord. These are to be the particular contexts, the tools we are to utilise in making the most of the teaching that is to come. You often get the impression when you read anything from him that Augustine was one of those people who liked to have the last word. So I'm going to be obtuse and deny him that opportunity. In preparing to talk to you today, I did my usual thing of checking what the experts had to say. And as I've hinted at before, when you're dealing with the Holy Trinity, you could easily slip into several years of lockdown as you try to grapple not only with the doctrine, how it emerged and how it's sometimes understood and indeed applied. But then I found something different. And what struck me was how much this seemed to reflect those gifts of the Holy Spirit I've been talking about, especially wisdom and understanding. It's generally recognised that one of the best recent modern textbooks on Christian theology was written by the Anglican Alistair McGrath. As you'd expect of a topic like that, McGrath has a chapter on the doctrine of the Trinity. Credit where it's due, this is in my view a pretty masterful and comprehensive review of the topic. But before Alistair gets into some of the detail, he sets the scene in a way I found both incorporates those gifts of the Spirit and is done with honesty, and this is rare, humility. Hold on, Alistair says, and before you get deeply into all of this, these words of wisdom. So what he does is remind his reader of a few what I might call the facts of the faith like the inability of human language to do liberty to the transcendent. How can, he asks, human words adequately express the divine? And again, what I might call the welcome obvious. There are limits, he stresses, on the human ability to grasp the things of God. Don't forget, he insists, that the God who made us more than appreciates our shortcomings. And if you want a piece of scripture to back that opinion up, he translates a well-known line from St. Paul, reminding us that we humans see in a mirror in terms of a riddle through a dark glass darkly. Alistair quotes from St. Hilary. We are compelled to attempt what is unobtainable, to climb where we cannot reach, to speak what we cannot utter. Instead of the mere adoration of faith, we are compelled to entrust the deep things of religion to the perils of human expression. Dear old Augustine reminds us that if we are created in the image of God, then Christian understanding means that that is of a God revealed to us as Father, Son and Holy Spirit. And even if we have to struggle getting to an understanding or an appreciation of what that is. Let's pray that God who is Trinity and the Spirit's gifts illuminate and invigorate us over the coming weeks and months of what I hope is for all of us a far from ordinary time. Amen.
Let us pray. We come boldly to the throne of grace, praying to the Almighty God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit for mercy and grace. We plead before your throne in heaven. Father of heaven, whose love profound a ransom for our souls has found, we pray for the world created by your love, for its nations and governments. Extend to them your peace, pardoning love, mercy and grace. We plead before your throne in heaven. Almighty Son, incarnate Word, our Prophet, Priest, Redeemer, Lord, we pray for the Church, created for your glory, for its ministry to reflect those works of yours. Extend to us your salvation, growth, mercy and grace. We plead before your throne in heaven. Eternal Spirit, by whose breath the soul is raised from sin and death, we pray for families and individuals created in your image, for the lonely, the bereaved, the sick and the dying. Breathe on them the breath of life and bring them to your mercy and grace. We plead before your throne in heaven. Thrice Holy, Father, Spirit, Son, Mysterious Godhead, three in one, we pray for ourselves, for your Church, for all whom we remember before you. Bring us all to bow before your throne in heaven, to receive life and pardon, mercy and grace for all eternity, as we worship you, saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Amen. And now, as our ta Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Oh,
Thank you for joining with us for our worship and now a prayer of blessing. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors.